Well, dear friends, I'm very pleased to be able to talk to you this way. I wish I could be with you in person, but this is perhaps the next best thing. You have a very important conference, the future of Europe, and I'd like to say a few words about that. You'd all like to know what is the future of Europe, what is the future of humanity, where Europe is a key actor. But remember, the future is not to be predicted, it's to be created. If, you, if the future were predictable, it would be a very sad situation because it would mean that we already know what it is and we can't do much about it. That's the way it will be. But there is no such thing as a predictable future, not when it comes to such a complex system as a human society, especially a group of human societies like the Europe, like the Union of Europe. So the future has to be created, and one thing we know about this creation is that it must innovate. It must be something different than what it was. It must be even a major innovation, a major change. Why? Because the current situation, the current trend, the current dynamic is not sustainable. Non-sustainability means that if it would continue, unchanged, it would break down. This we don't want, this would be a catastrophe. But there are alternatives to the future of a collapse. The alternative is either a future of breakdown or a future of breakthrough. These are diametrically opposed alternatives. And when you get a situation in which you face either a breakdown or a breakthrough, you are in a situation of what is known in science as a bifurcation. Now, what is a bifurcation? A bifurcation means a change, a radical change in the trajectory of the evolution of a system. A system will evolve along certain lines. You can measure it in terms of energy or size or complexity or some other quality. A system can evolve with some minor fluctuations along some of these parameters. But there could come a period, a time, when this evolution no longer continues, when it, when it meets, encounters a sudden change. This sudden change is a bifurcation. Let me say a few words about what it means, a bifurcation, in thermodynamics, in science in general, because it applies to human societies. It applies not that because we are simply a thermodynamic system, but because we are a complex system. And certain laws of complexity apply to all complex systems. But think of a system, let's take a human organism, for example. No living system is stable. We are all semi-stable. We are all subject to fluctuations. If you measure the temperature the sh uh, of an organism, the sugar concentration, the rate of heartbeat, anything like this, you will always find that there are fluctuations. There are changes, but these changes are around a given norm. In a living organism, these norms are called, called homeostatic norms. They come back to a condition which represents basically the health of a system. If the system is viable, these fluctuations fluctuate around these norms. 36.8 degrees on the Celsius scale, scale for the temperature of the blood, for example. We know all the other norms, and they have been described in great detail. Now, what happens when a system is sick, when a system is diseased, when a system is stressed? You could encounter a fluctuation in which it's no longer possible to come back to the norm. It can't be pulled in. In fact, sometimes the fluctuation is so strong that one element of this fluctuation just feeds into another, it's known as positive feedback, and then it becomes more and more until at such a point that the system, as a, as a whole system, as a living system, can no longer exist. That's a critical condition. It's every living system is mortal in that sense, sooner or later encounters such a bifurcation. But a system made up of living systems is not necessarily mortal. 
is because it doesn't have a single DNA, a single code. Such a system has, uh, can be decoded. What is a code? For a living system, the codes are homeostatic norms of functioning. For a human society, the code is a system of values, system of beliefs, a system whereby you can act according to certain preconceived, certain notions of what it is for good for the system. You have laws, you have regulations, you have beliefs, you have presuppositions. All of these make up what we can call the culture of a system. Now, the culture of a system today is such that it's not sustainable. When it comes to the bottom line, we reach a bifurcation where this system, let's call it Europe, we can call it an individual country in Europe, we can call it an individual European, any level of this system, is such that if you want to have it continue, then it must change its culture. A human being cannot live forever. Europe can continue into the undisclosed, indefinite future if it manages to decode itself, to adopt a new culture. The question is, what kind of a culture? What do we need? Now here we come to another aspect of the situation today. We need to recover our norms. We need to recover a culture of sustainability. Every living system, every organism, every ecology operates on the basis of information. This information can be easily followed and if the, system is, if the system follows this information, then it is coherent. That means that every element of that system works together to maintain that system along that given, given trajectory, which is defined by its culture. Let's be a little bit more concrete. Today, we have a culture, the modern culture of modernity, which has been developed first of all in Europe, and then it spread to America, spread to now to the rest of the world. And this culture is no longer aligned with the norms of life on this earth. This culture is no longer consistent or coherent with the rest. Why is that? Because it has separated itself out. It has considered itself only for its, in terms of its own good and not looking at the rest of it. it it's been operating on the basis of a short-term assessment of what is the good for, for it without much regard in the long term of what is the good for the whole system. Take, for example, economics. For economics, the whole system, which would, should be nature, is considered actually a subsystem. For economics, the whole system is the system of buying and selling, of exchange in terms of monetary value, and the subsystem is nature and the environment. It's just considered one of the elements. But this is turning things upside down. The real system, the whole system, is nature in which humanity is a part. We are a subsystem. And every human individual is a subsystem of the humanity system. And, and so on, just as every cell in our body is a subsystem of our organism. Doesn't mean that it's subsidiary. It means that we are embedded in a larger system. And together we can maintain the system, we must maintain the system in a condition what you can describe as flourishing. The way we maintain the system today in Europe, in, modern, in the modern world altogether, as opposed to a classical world, to, to, the, to the native indigenous cultures, which are much more sustainable, the way we maintain it is the creating more and more stress. Because we have deviated from the norm of the overall system. Every system on this earth is coded to us to maintain itself coherently with every other system. The ideal for such coherence is to be coherent with others, to be coherent internally with every element of the system, is to be consistent working together with every other element. That means super coherence. 
We have lost this. We have lost this. We are coherent only in the short term, only with certain groups. It's as if this whole system is breaking down into parts. There's the economy, there is business, there's also a, 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 a culture, a, a, a particularly economized version of culture, monetized. And there is education, there is science, there's all kinds of other subsystems here. But instead of working together, many of these systems work for themselves. Now when a system has subsystems which only work for themselves, then it endangers the entire whole system. In the extreme case, it kills the whole system. When in the human organism, this happens. When a subsystem only reproduces itself, it will kill the whole system, and we call it cancer. But every disease is a break, is a break in the system, in the flow of the information and energy in the system. We are multiply breaking apart the system of humanity, the culture. Is, is, is flawed. This has not always been so. We think this is human nature. Actually, up to the past 300 years or so, until the dawn of the modern age, societies were much more consistent, much more coherent. They did not kill the host system. They, did not, they sometimes were fighting with each other, obviously, but they did not, were not a parasite. They were not a cancer in the whole system. Today, we are endangering the entire life on Earth, the entire system of life. And this has to change. Europe could change it by recovering its belongingness, its wholeness, its oneness with the overall system in which it is a part. Fortunately, we have it in us because the DNA and the RNA and the epigenetic system in our body is an expression of, of nature's coding of, for health and for flourishing. Every healthy system has this universal code in it. We have it and we can access it if we can move beyond this short-term mistaken perception of all good is only all good, never mind what it is called for the whole. This is a wrong way of, of formulating. To think what is good for us is automatically good for the rest, the invisible hand, which Adam Smith didn't actually mean this way, but this is the way it's taken to mean. This is a wrong perception. The other way is the right perception. What is good for the whole system, which means the system of life on Earth, is good for any part of that system. We have to recover that, that natural norm. We have to get back, back, back to who we really are, members of an interdependent, interacting, basic kind of a quantum system where every part is in functional relationship with every other part. It is in us. We have to access it. When we recognize this, we have an aha experience. We say, yes, I knew this, but we forget it. In, in the everyday busy life, the concrete life of business, of economy, of living on this earth has forgotten this. We need to get back to it. So this, this is the final point I'd like to make. The bifurcation in society, in Europe, will come about if there is a bifurcation also in us. Because now comes Gandhi's sayings relevant. This is what he said, as we know, be the change that you want to see in the world. We have to have a bifurcation in us if you want to have a bifurcation in society. Why Europe? Obviously every country, every nation, every individual on this earth needs to recode itself to the culture of oneness, to the culture of belonging to the Gaia system, to the whole system. But Europe has been at the forefront of the change that moved it out of equilibrium, out of the system, it was the mistaken ideas of modernity. Now I'm not saying that all of European culture is mistaken, but this element of mechanistic con considerations, of everything is separate, we have only our own good to consider. That is a mistaken interpretation of the classical paradigm of Newtonian physics. Physics today is a quantum physics, is a physics of belonging, of an oneness, of non-locality, of entanglement, not of separate bits of matter moving about. We have to learn from science, but we have to go back 
and they discover in ourselves what it is to belong, to be one with the system. Change your thinking so that you can change the world around you. Europe has been responsible for moving us into this aberration and Europe has now had the task, the chance, and necessity of moving us back into the embrace of the larger whole of which we are a part. I hope this conference will consider how we can do this. We have to change ourselves so we can change the world. We need to change the world because as it is, it's not sustainable. But it can be sustainable. Europe could be at the forefront of a movement that recreates our oneness with each other and with nature. The oneness which is discovered in the new sciences, which has been forgotten in the social sphere, which needs to be rediscovered there. But first of all, individually, each one of us needs to go back and find our place, find our role, find our unity with that larger whole of which we are a part. Thank you so much for your attention.